Hey, oh, every pony! I got another one to do fan fiction, etc., etc. Today, I'm going to be reading Pony Scales, which I suppose is some fan fiction about how Twilight turned herself into a dragon somehow. I don't know. It's a romance, a comedy, random, and adventure. It is written by the same genius mind behind Princess Molestia, Streak the Fox. So, I don't know what to expect with this one. Here we go. Pony Scales by Streak the Fox. Spike is a dragon, a species of the reptilian family. He is currently the assistant of the unicorn pony named Twilight Sparkle, who is a member of the mammalian family. Therefore, by the regulated laws of nature, a pony and a dragon cannot and will not love each other in any sort of non-platonic way. Although life and nature have rules and fail-safes that not even the strongest magic can break, sometimes these rules can be bent. Spike, I'm back, Twilight announced as she trotted through the door of her library home. The sun was still high in the sky, perched up around noontime when Twilight returned to her home. Did you get what you needed from Zakoras? Spike asked, looking over his shoulder as he balanced himself on top of a ladder, trying to place a book in its original spot. I most certainly did, Twilight replied happily, levitating a slightly worn-out hardcover book from her saddlebag. She gently set the book on the desk in the center of the library and proceeded to flip through its pages, scanning her eyes over each page. What are you looking for, anyways? Spike questioned as he slid down the ladder and walked towards Twilight. It's not really often that you have to travel to Sakura's for something, especially when it's in a book. Remember that letter I got yesterday? It was a request from the Canterlot School of Magic. They wanted me to come in and give a presentation of some sort of vast types of life out there throughout and beyond Equestria. Even though I do have a few books that tap into that sort of subject, they only give brief descriptions, and some of them didn't even have any sort of illustrations, so I went to Zakora to see if she kept any sort of books about some of the exotic life from her homeland. Hmm, now that you mention it, I never really thought of how different the town she came from could be from ours. What do you think they have over there? Oh, where do I start? Twilight asked herself, her mind washing over the many types of creeper creatures she's heard about. There's herbivores such as gazelles, giraffes, elephants, as well as some carnivorous creatures such as lions, hyenas, leopards, cheetahs, and jackals. Whoa. Uh, Spike paused for a few moments as his mind tried to make images of all the things he just heard. Uh, what are those? That's exactly what we're going to find out, Twilight answered happily as she stopped on a page. But don't think their world is completely different from ours altogether. They have some animals that we do over here, like foxes, wolves, cats, dogs, badgers, and even... Twilight leaned her head back in surprise after reading through a certain entry on a list. Oh, they even have dragons as well! Well, I'll never do that, Spike said in almost equal surprise. What kind of dragons do they have over there? Well, Twilight began, switching her tone back to lecture mode. As you probably know, there's many types of dragons out there in the world. The two main types are magical and non-magical dragons. Magical dragons are usually born with the ability to control or manipulate a natural type of element, such as water, fire, wind, and so on. However, they're very rare and are now considered an endangered species. Yeah, yeah, I know all that stuff already. What about the non-magical dragons, like me? Well, the most common type of dragon is the arborary dragon, like the one that we had to drive out of Ponyville a, wh a while back. However, over from where Zakor is from, the two most common types of dragons are <sighs> Scarcinous dragons, or dragons of the desert, and Terror Lord dragons, or dragons of the ground. There really isn't much about them from the books I've found, but this book seems to be filled with all sorts of information about them and all their other species, as well as even... Oh, this is interesting! What? What is it? Spike said as he peeked over to the book. There seems to be a collection of spells and potions that are associated with types of life native to there. Oh, this is wonderful. Such a collection of this type of material will be great for my presentation at the Academy. Well, you go and categorize your spells or whatever it is you do with them, Spike said as he started walking towards the kitchen. The subject of magic, not one of his interest areas. I'm going to go finish up my chores for the day. As Spike left, Twilight perched herself in front of the book and began to read through the descriptions of all the different types of animals that were mentioned in the book. 
This is going to be absolutely wonderful, Twilight thought. I can't wait to see some of the types of spells they have at Sakura's homeland. Some time later. Spike! Twilight called out. Yes, Twilight? Spike asked as he poked his head out of the kitchen, having just started on making Twilight some tea. I'm going to go back to Zakora's real fast. I'll be back soon. I need a few items that she may have and which will benefit my studies. Then I'll hurry right back. All right, Twilight, but be careful. It's not usually not a, it's usually not a good idea for some pony to keep walking back and forth through the Everfree Forest. Oh, don't worry, Spike. I'm quite confident I can make it there and back without any sort of trouble. Twilight smiled, smiled to her assistant as she put on her saddlebag and proceeded out the door. Spike sighed deeply as he looked back into the kitchen knowing Twilight wouldn't get back before the tea was ready. Out of curiosity, Spike walked over to the book Twilight had been reading before she left. As he skimmed through the page the book was open to, he took note of the title section she was currently on. Transformation Spells and Potions. Some time later... Spike! I'm back! Again! Twilight announced as she once more trotted into her library home. As she set her saddlebag next to her desk, she noticed Spike coming out of the kitchen. It's about time you came back. You've been gone for at least a couple hours. Spike's like the maiden of the house. Ooh. Sorry, Spike, but it's quite a walk to Zakora's place, you know. She magically opened her bag and started pulling out a few colorful boxes with and little pots that she had inside. But I wasn't able to get a lot of materials from Zakora for the spells I found in the book. You mean you're actually going to try some of the spells in there? Of course! What better way to learn about the spells than from doing them? I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we? Of course, Twilight giggled. I want my number one assistant to help me with testing my spells as always. Okay, but I don't know, Twy. Spike looked over to the book with a concerned look. Some of the stuff in there may not be all that safe to do. Oh, come on, Spike, don't worry. I'm sure if there was anything I needed to know, Zakora would tell me. So what's the worst that could happen? All right, all right, fine. But what kind of spell did you want to do first? Spike asked, the answer almost obvious to him after seeing the page Twilight left the book on. This! Twilight proclaimed as, she, proclaimed as she levitated the book in front of Spike's face, confirming his suspicions. <sighs> Not this again, Twilight. Spike sighed. Remember the last time you tried transformation spells? I got turned into a chicken for two days, and everybody kept calling me Scootaloo! <laughs> Spike crossed his arms in disgust, remembering those couple days. Yes, I remember, which is why I decided to try the spells on myself instead of you. If you say so, Twy, just be careful. These are spells from a whole other continent, remember. You're worrying too much, Spike, Twilight joked as she flipped past a couple pages. But I got an idea to help you get excited about these spells. Oh, really? And what exactly did you have in mind? This! Twilight proclaimed as she once again levitated the book in front of Spike's face, allowing him to read the title of the spell on top of the page. You're gonna transform yourself into a dragon? He asked loudly. Yep. Actually, consider it strange, but I've always wondered what it would be like to live life in your hooves. Um, I mean, claws. Twilight pulled the book back with her magic as she, as she also began to gather a few more items from her bag. All I need are a few items, which I got from Zakora, and a little bit of the type of dragon I want to transform into. Wait. Does that mean you're gonna want to take my... Spike gulped. B blood Not to worry. I just need a little bit of your scales DNA, so I can shave off a teensy little bit of your scales. It shouldn't hurt at all. With this, Twilight levitated a metal file out of her bag and started walking towards Spike, who proceeded to back up. Whoa, wait a minute! That thing looks painful. Trust me, Spike. This won't hurt a bit. I promise. Twilight assured with a warm smile. Though Spike still had his doubts, he sighed again and dipped his head, pointing his uppermost spine towards Twilight as, she, as he braced himself. Levitating over a small wooden bowl, Twilight carefully used the file to shave off a very small portion of Spike's scale, forming only a soft layer of scale dust in the bowl. There! That should be it! Twilight announced happily as she tucked the file back into her bag. Phew, finally, Spike said in relief. So what's next? Well, according to the book, the spell itself is very simple. It just requires some specific items for it. 
Fallout was bringing out some other powders and bits of what looked like old plants, guiding the, each of them into a separate bowl. It won't take long. In fact, I'm almost done. After adding a light blue liquid to the second bowl and a small bit of water, the content great gently began to sizzle, which Twilight recognized from the book to be the indication that the potion was ready. She then began to channel magic into her horn, focusing on the spell and putting it together quickly. Then she released the spell, sending a soft light shooting at the potion and making it boil. Stand back, Spike, Twilight said as she levitated the first bowl with Spike's scale dust in it over the second bowl. This is going to affect anything near it, so you should stay back just in case. You don't have to tell me twice, Spike said, already looking out from behind the kitchen door. After one last deep breath, Twilight turned over the first bowl and let the dust fall into the boiling concoction. Almost immediately, a large puff of green smoke erupted from the bowl, enveloping Twilight and the surrounding furniture. The smoke sizzled for a while, coughing being heard from inside the cloud as Spike watched closely. After a few seconds, the smoke began to clear, and Spike could begin to make out the f a figure in the, sp in the smoke. Hey, Spike, Twilight called out from inside the massive smoke. I... I think it worked. I feel... Whoa! Ooh, let me see, Spike said, a smile coming to his face as he realized Twilight was fine. I bet you like... Spike stopped dead in his tracks as he saw a Twilight before him. The new Twilight. Twilight's spell had worked, and she had become a dragon. Her primary outer scales were the same color as her coat, while the scales running from her chin down across her belly and to the tip of the underside of her tail were pink, like her one highlight in her mane and tail. She was noticeably larger than Spike, though only a few feet taller, just a bit higher than she would be as a pony standing on all four legs. Her tail was longer and curled a bit at, at the end, which also had the same triangle point that Spike had. She also had spiked scales that ran down from above her forehead, down the center of her back, and all the way to the tip of her tail. These scales were a very dark mix of blue and purple, resembling the main color of her mane and tail. Lastly, she had the scales that were present around Spike's cheeks, only they were longer, drooped down at the ends of it, and were the darker purple that made up the second highlight in her mane and tail. Wow, this is, this is amazing, Twilight beamed as she stood up straight, wiggling around her fingers as she inspected closely. I I got hands and fingers. Oh, Lyra's going to be so jealous. Twilight then looked behind her and wagged her tail a little. Oh my, I even have a tail too. Oh, this is so amazing. Twilight inspected her tail closely, raising it up as she looked down towards her lower face, towards the lower base of her tail. Isn't this cool, Spike? Um Spike? Twilight looked up at Spike standing behind her, noticing him staring at her closely. Spike was standing very still, his eyes fixated on the lower base of Twilight's pale tail that she had just been examining. Spike was also blushing heavily, his upper teeth biting down on his bottom lip as he lightly twiddled his fingers together. Spike? Hello? Twilight let go of her tail and waved her arms at him. After a few seconds, Spike snapped back to attention. Uh huh! I, um, what? I mean, uh, whoa! Uh, Spike said, putting a hand on his head. I guess the spell worked really well, huh? Twilight's oh, yeah, that's what Twilight said with a smile as she walked over to the mirror. Wow, I look just like you, Spike. Just a bit older, obviously. She turned her body around the s some as she examined herself further in the mirror. Wow, life is a dragon. This is so going into my presentation. I hope the spell lasts longer than just a few hours. Spike didn't respond. He only kept staring at Twilight as she moved her figure around in front of the mirror, showing off all the curves and movements of her body. Spike bit his lip harder as he felt most of his blood rushing to his head, his blush increasing dramatically. I wonder how long it does last anyways, Twilight thought aloud as she returned to the book. After skimming through the workings of the spell, she read it on a line in bold text. For spell length, see transformations using potions with magic on page 85. All right. Twilight used her fingers to flip through the pages to number 85 and then began to read through it. It says here... Oh, it says that spells using a combination of magic and potions must be reverted using another potion. Form changes are permanent unless a proper potion is supplied. Maybe I should have read that part before trying out the spell, Twilight said to herself in a moderately worried tone. Well, I should have what I need in my bag. 
If not, I can certainly get it from Zakora again if I need to. Twilight bent over and looked through her saddlebags, her rump now fully displayed once again to Spike. Spike's whole face blushed now as he felt himself getting close to fainting. His pupils are the size of little beads, with his eyes as wide as dinner plates as he looked down at Twilight's rear. While Twilight was shifting from one side of her saddlebag to the other, she unintentionally wiggled her behind at Spike, making his eyes roll back to the top of his head and finally fall back, knocked out cold. Poor Spike. Oh, he's so precious. Spike? Twilight called out as she heard a thud from behind her. Turning around, she saw the dragon passed out on his back while mumbling softly. Um, Spike? Concerned, Twilight quickly rushed over to Spike to see if he was okay, figuring that he simply passed out from the shock of her being a dragon. However, listening closely, she was able to hear a bit of his unconscious mumbling. That ass. <laughs> Nice. Well, uh, that first chapter was a little boring, but the next one might be more exciting, so... Uh, I mean, you know, it is from Streak the Fox, so, I mean, it's bound to get more exciting. You know? So, chapter two coming, whatever, some other time. Yippee-ki-yay.